The next question says, from a circular disc of radius r and mass 9m, a small disc of radius r by 3 is removed from the disc. The moment of inertia of the remaining disc about an axis perpendicular to the plane of the disc and passing through O is. Now, the diagram given in the question is something like this. This is the original disc for mass is 9m and the radius as r. There is a smaller disc for which the radius is r by 3. The distance of the center of the disc from the original disc is 2r by 3. And this is the point O about which the moment of inertia is asked. I can say, let's say the moment of inertia of the original disc is I1 which is definitely 9m r square by 2. So 9m is the mass of the disc, r is the radius and m r square by 2 is the general formula for it. Now let's say I2 is the moment of inertia of this disc about this axis passing through point O perpendicular to the plane for which we have to use parallel axis theorem and we also need to find the mass of this disc. Now we can say density is going to be the same. So density of the bigger disc is equal to density of the smaller disc which means mass of the bigger disc 9m upon volume of the bigger disc is equal to mass of the smaller disc upon volume of the smaller disc. That means 9m by volume is area into thickness. Area is going to be pi r square and thickness is going to be t. For the smaller disc, the area is going to be pi r square by 9 because the radius is r by 3 into thickness is t because thickness is going to be uniform. So pi r square t gets cancelled. This 9 goes up and also gets cancelled which means the mass of the smaller disc is m. That means the moment of inertia of this smaller disc about an axis passing through its center and perpendicular to the plane which we can call it as IC is going to be m r by 3 the whole square by 2 plus we need to have m h square which is over here h is 2 r by 3 the distance between the two parallel axes. So it is going to be m 2 r by 3 the whole square. If we simplify this it is going to be m r square by 9 into 2 18 plus 4 m r square by 9. If we simplify this further it is going to be 9 m r square by 18 which is nothing but mr square by 2. Now we want the moment of inertia of the remaining part of the disc which means we need to subtract the moment of inertia of the smaller disc from the bigger disc. That means the I we require is going to be I1 minus I2 that is 9 mr square by 2 minus mr square by 2 which is definitely going to be 8 mr square by 2 and that will be 4 m r square and so the final answer is going to be 4 m r square 